onward to the demo I'm going to start with some neutrals and you can see I don't have a drawing in I'm pretty familiar and confident that you know this sort of scene you know doesn't uh, require too much detail but I am going to start with one of the largest and main shapes which is the building and just a little bit of uh, you know um umbers burnt sienna some neutrals whatever's on my palette just to get uh, a really pale wash and I will say one thing that I'm kind of a stickler to is building up my watercolor paintings and layers I like to start with a very thin layer uh, so when I say thin of course I mean watered down so lots of H2O very little pigment <clears throat> so if we were to uh, look at the, these colors going down and let's say de desaturate them um, the values of these colors are going to be very pale so if you, you know, laid out swatches where one was very dark very saturated all the way to a very thin transparent light value swatch you know I'm using those you know first two or three swatches so extre extremely light in value very little pigment and then that way I can build it up with each layer so as you can see I went around where the cars will be on the right hand side um, that's going to allow me to have a little more control over those shapes later on and it's going to reveal the you know that crisp white area of the paper which I tend to like uh, some artists like to tone the whole paper they don't like that bright white showing through I happen to like it I, I like the feel of it it feels very fresh so I always try to leave a little bit I did go back in where the awning is going to be and I added a little more red because I don't really want to go over that red anymore um, because I, if I do it's going to be too powerful so this is completely dry I took the hair dryer to it I dried everything 100% you can see all those values are very late uh, very um, light and they're also um, they're pale they're very transparent so now I'm going to move in with the darker uh, paint and they're all it's also a little more saturated so all the colors I mix up now uh, tend to you know have less water and more pigment and uh, therefore they're going to be darker in value as well so um, this is a good way to think about watercolor painting um, if you can think you know, light to dark, which is, you know, if you've been around watercolor for a little while, you, I'm sure you've heard that term. I think it's a good way to approach the medium, uh, unlike acrylic where we can put light over dark um, because it's a little more opaque. Uh, you don't really have that luxury uh, with watercolor. So you have to sort of plan things out a little bit, a little bit more anyway. Now I'm going to move in with some greens. I don't want that green to be too saturated. Um, if it's too vibrant near that red, it'll feel like Christmas. Not that there's anything wrong with Christmas, but I want the green to be toned back a little bit. Um, so I'm going to use neutral tint and cad yellow lemon. Uh, those two create a really good uh, darker green. So it's in the green family, but it's not so um, vibrant that it jumps out at you. And of course, I wanted something a little bit darker too that I could um, carve out the edge of the awning and also add a little tree to the right hand side. Now I move to my needle brush. I'm going to do a little bit of line work in the background. Just want to indicate or really suggest uh, a couple of buildings, maybe a little shadow here and there, and then leave it alone. You have to be careful with the background if you start if I start putting too much information into the background uh, then it's going to come forward uh, it's going to become um, it's going to want your attention and I think the background should be left in the background it should be a backdrop and I, I like to put a little something there uh, just to give the middle ground and foreground something to rest on but again I try to avoid and I also recommend you know adding few details so now uh, sticking with that needle brush adding some branches a few little um, details here and there I'm going to suggest some windows in that building 
But because the left side of that building is in shadow, I don't want to add too much information. Uh, if you put too much information into the shadows, uh, then it doesn't look like a shadow anymore. Um, but if you really study landscapes, uh, cityscapes, uh, you'll find that things that are in shadow uh, tend to have less detail. So try to I try to avoid you know adding bricks and all these little subtleties because um, you know typically um, it's going to ruin the painting. It's going to get too busy, and you know the shadows are really intended to help showcase the light side. So of course the light source is coming from the right hand side. So that right hand side of the building is going to have a lighter value. And we tend to see more shadows and, and information uh, where the light is hitting. So now that white of the paper where the cars will be is starting to come in handy. I'm going to add a little bit darker value to the backs of the cars and then just go in uh, with my, this is a sword brush and just create some nice loose strokes. Um, uh, you know, you have to, again, be careful here. This is a, a part of the painting where you want it to be descriptive. Uh, we want to be able to look at these shapes and identify uh, the cars uh, as opposed to looking at them. They just look like blobs of paint. Um, I tend to you know, have certain areas that have, you know, crisp, hard edges and other areas of the painting that can you know, be a little bit softer and blurry. Uh, but those cars are where the light is hitting and I wanted those edges to be nice and crisp. But I added a, a few shadows, a few windows, and uh, now I'm going to move in uh, with some tail lights. I'm starting to suggest some figures as well. And this is one area that I think you know, not using a drawing really helps. Uh, I find if I use a drawing, and I, and I do use them, I'm, I'm not, you'll see my demos, I, there's plenty of situations where I prefer a drawing. But for a scene like this, it's not very complex, so I can go without it. But the, the beauty of it is that, you know, you don't have all of these lines that are pre-drawn and you feel like you have to stay within those lines. Um, and you can also use some of those, the abstract quality, some of those uh, strokes that were put on during the first wash and, and the one I'm applying now. You can sort of extract things from it. So you can look at it and go, oh, that'd be really nice to kind of rub that out and put a little figure there. Or I like the way that stroke's coming down. That could be the top of the head and that could be a figure. So it's kind of interesting sometimes to, to not have that drawing and to not have all those outlines because you can sort of um, maximize all of the, the wash itself and to place things according to what the wash is giving you versus what you uh, where you feel they should go and and have everything planned out so that may be a little bit uh maybe difficult to grasp and learn or or try in the beginning because you're afraid of making mistakes but it's just a technique that i've sort of come to appreciate and use a lot these days and i think if i can get away without a drawing then I, I try to leave it out. If I need maybe to place a few key shapes in there, uh, then I can always just put a few key shapes and then leave the rest undrawn. Um, there, and there are certain elements I don't think you have to draw, period, like trees and stuff like that, or just things that you can always add later on, telephone poles, wires, of course, all those things you don't really need in the pre-drawing. You just sort of add those things uh, later on once the painting develops um, so here uh, continuing to build up the light and shadow uh, so this second layer is very important because that's exactly what's happening i'm going in with the second layer and i'm giving a feeling of three dimension on that two-dimensional surface so i'm trying to um, add light and shadow uh, to all the shapes to make it more believable and uh, that's Really, this second layer is where most of the heavy lifting is done, if not all the heavy lifting. And you want to, or I want to, you know, always take my time here because this is where uh, the work is happening. Um, that first layer, 
I like to exploit that first layer and just really put those washes down nice and free. Let them mingle, let them roam, let them bleed into each other. Let gravity take over and help me out because that's a good time to do it. That's where watercolor works best. Uh, it wants to create those happy accidents and those abstract qualities. And it's a shame, shame to do a watercolor painting and never really exploit uh, what the medium is really good at. And that's all that bleeding and running and and all the, those sort of things that make make the, the medium so special. So there, I think there's a time to, you know, let those things happen. And there's a time to sort of rein it in and use a little more finesse uh, with your brush strokes. And uh, that's sort of what I'm doing now. So I'm kind of little by little, I'm bouncing around the image. And I'm trying to say, okay, well, it needs a little bit here. It needs a little bit there. And just look at the overall balance. At this point, it's pretty much done. I'm going to move in with some highlights. I prefer to use matte acrylics. Uh, this is titanium white, but the matte will dry very flat. It's not going to have a shine to it like most acrylic paint. And I'll just add a few dots uh, to the tops of a few heads, to the trees here and there where there could be a little sparkle showing. And then that will, again, give it a nice sense of light and shadow. Uh, it's easy to overdo it here, so just make sure you add a little bit. You can always add more later on. But once you put those white highlights on, they're sort of hard to take off sometimes. That tree just felt a little bit heavy, so I just went in with a little bit of water and just used a clean paper towel to lift some of that paint. And that just gave it a little bit more of a, I guess, transparent feel. And again, just kind of felt like it was heavy and because it's almost in the middle of the painting, I felt it was a little distracting and adding that little area, um, I think, took that away. All right. So here using my uh, needle brush, add a few details. I signed it. I'll go back in, maybe drop a few darks ar around that point of interest where all the figures are. Maybe a little detail on the car here, perhaps a little figure on the left hand or the right hand side as well. And uh, just sort of adding those finishing touches that um, you know, just make it a, a little more interesting. And you know, I always like to add a little something at the end there, but again, you have to be careful with that or it's easy to take it too far. So there's a look at the finished piece. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.